Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Anna Morfid is here with Mending Hearts Counseling and today's video is going to be a Q&A and this question was actually brought into one of my sessions that I had yesterday with a client and we were talking about romantic relationships and this client was very aware that they are finding themselves back into the same patterns that they worked so hard to free themselves from. And their question was, why can I not break free from my patterns, Anna? Why am I finding myself back in the same position? What is wrong with me? Okay, so first of all, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you. I just wanna say that loud and clear, there is never, ever, nothing ever wrong with us. There is just, different physiological and physical needs that we have within us that have been either met or not met when we were children and they in turn then shape us into the adult that we become later on in life and how we attach to lovers and to um, people of the romantic type of relationship. So again, there is nothing wrong with you. We just all have an attachment style that stems from our childhood that then later on depicts how we attach to our lovers. So when we understand attachment style, we can understand why we do find ourselves in the same old patterns over and over again. It's because that is what our physiological system actually knows to look for and desires it and will do anything to go and get it. Okay, so attachment style. There's four different attachment styles. Only one of the four attachment styles leads to relationships that are not codependent when we are um, adults. So secure attachment, it's about 65% of the population, is the one that leaves us when we are adults to be healthily attached to our lovers. The rest of us that have a negative attachment style, negative meaning that we have a negative self-view and we um, have a codependency on our lovers that kind of mimics the dependency that we had when we were little to our primary caregivers and that need was not met. So if you remember, I talk about needs a lot. We have physiological needs and we have psychological needs. Physiological needs such as food and water are very um, easy, to, easy to know and to satisfy. Psy psychological needs are a little bit harder to find and a little bit harder to decipher because they are different in each individual. Um, when we are children, they might be the same or actually they are the same. It's the four physiological needs, sorry, psychological needs are um, to be seen, safe, seen, safe, seen, secure and soothed safe, seen, secure, and soothed. As we become adults, these needs of ours change and they become, they become such needs such as to be understood, to be validated, to be affirmed, to be desired, to be validated, to be appreciated, and most importantly out of them all is the need to belong. We are wired as humans to have connection. And I mean, from the moment that we are born, we are connected to a primary caregiver. And then we, as adolescents, we connect to our peers. And then as adults, we connect to um, lovers. So we're, we, we are wired as human beings to be connected to other people, to complete our sense of self. And there's been many studies that have been done on um, monkeys that have been isolated or mice and they track what that does to their brain. And it's actually really, really, really sad. Um, I actually hope they don't do those experiments anymore, but in the same time, I'm grateful that these 
experiments took place because we understand how the lack of connection does affect our brain and our well-being. And it's really important to know that you're not being needy when you have that need for belonging. You're not being needy when you have that need for connection. It is actually part of your physiological well-being and it's a vital ingredient in you being your most optimal and healthy self to have. So when you are little and perhaps due to parenting styles, you haven't had the opportunity to satisfy those basic needs of being safe, seen, secure, and soothed, when you grow to be an adult, you are still seeking for that need to be met. Because say, for example, you did not have your physical needs met, such as food and water, what happens when you're hungry? I know in my case, I get very, um, I get angry. And unless I am fed, that anger does not go away. Um, if I am dehydrated, I get really lightheaded and, and, and I get a headache and I feel dizzy. And that feeling doesn't go away until I give myself water. Well, same thing go with the needs. When we don't have those needs, the, sorry, the uh, psychological needs, when the psychological needs are not met, it doesn't just go away. That feeling of it being satisfied is still going to be there and that need is going to do anything to, to, to get it and, and, and to meet it. So now if we are negatively attached to our lovers, it means that we have had a negative self-view when we were a child and it means that we have um, codependency style of loving someone because we haven't had the opportunity to feel the positive needs be met. So we don't even know to crave any different, right? Like if you're hungry and you have a craving for something, you don't think of the things that you've never tried before. You think of the things that you have tasted and you know what it feels like because they have been integrated in your system. So you crave for the things that you know what they are. So same comes with the psychological needs. You crave the ones that you know. So if the only needs that you know that have not been met. Actually, I'm not explaining that properly. So you crave the feelings, sorry. So when needs are not met, they produce positive. When needs are not met, they produce negative feelings. When needs are, when needs are met, they produce positive feelings. Unmet needs produce negative feelings. Met needs produce positive feelings. So when we don't know what it feels like to have our needs met and we produce negative feelings, that is what we're going to seek to find. We don't know anything different. So we're still trying to get that need met, but we don't know to equate it to a different feeling because we've never tasted it. So that's why we find ourselves in the same old patterns. We haven't had a chance to integrate into our system what it would actually feel like to be in a relationship where our needs are met and we do have feelings of understanding and affirmation and validation and appreciation and belonging. Okay, These are feelings that are produced within us when our needs are met. When our needs are not met, the opposite feelings are elicited in our body that mimic low self-worth, that feel, um, that, I, that have us feeling perhaps trapped, perhaps misunderstood, um, unappreciated, um, disconnected, disregarded, these types of feelings. But we don't know any difference if we grew up with a negative attachment style. So it only makes sense that we, we crave, like we have a natural craving as human beings to fill our needs. But because 
we don't know what it feels like to have our needs met. We don't know what it feels like to have our needs met in a positive way. We seek the negative feelings that we have experienced so far. When we're actually aware of this pattern is when we can create change. So kudos to my client who is even asking this question because people just repeat the same old patterns over and over without understanding why. But now that you have an understanding, you can create change. And there is this book by Prashaka and De Clemente, Changing for Good. They talk about the stages of change and how important it is to go from pre-contemplation where you are in your subconscious and you have no idea of the patterns that are taking place, why you're acting the way that you're acting. You're just in your misery and your dissatisfaction and you just think the world is against you. After that, you go into the contemplation stage where you are actually starting to realize that something is not right here. And then where my client is, is the contemplation stage is where you're actually like moving from your subconscious into your conscious and you're contemplating, why am I feeling this way? Why is this happening? After that is um, the stage of taking action. And after action, we do have maintenance and then after maintenance there are chances of like relapsing so say that you do your work and you understand what your needs are and what the positive feeling of having that need met will feel like because you're going to gift that to yourself i've made um many videos about needs and how to meet them on your own and not be dependent on other people because now you're an autonomous human being you're an adult and you no longer need a caregiver to fill your needs you can do them on your own and i can put that link of the video below once you have done that work you might relapse because it's not so easy to change our programming especially if it's been years and years and years and years of you firing the same signal over and over and over and over again so give yourself a break and just be gentle with yourself and it's okay it's okay to stumble and fall and get back up again it's okay to be in that contemplation phase and go back into the pre-contemplation or be into the action and fall off of that and have a relapse and then go back to maintaining it. That's normal. They're, they're part of the seven stages of change. And as long as we recognize them and we are we are okay with it, then everything is a-okay. Because we're humans having a human experience and emotions and feelings are predominant in our body and they, they, they live here and they're elicited all the time. So it's okay to feel things. But it's not okay to continue to feel things such as disconnection and disheartment and unhappiness and fulfillment. It's not okay. We can change it once we understand. So I hope I answered that question in a way that is understandable and is um, encouraging us to know why and to want different so remember to find out what your needs actually are and what it would feel like to have those to be met there's tons of literature even online if you even if you just google um feelings of met needs and lists pop up from various therapists or counselors as opposed to googling needs that feelings produced from needs that aren't met then equally there's that amount of literature out there from different therapists and counselors that will give you a really clear idea of what it is like to have your needs met and 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 not met and then why if you have been an, an individual that hasn't had their needs needs met in their life in a positive way why they would even find themselves in the same patterns um change is not easy but it's not impossible <laughs> And with that being said, I wish you love and light. I wish you a blessed rest of your day. I wish you to always know the patterns that you're in and know that you have the power to take yourself out of them. 
And again, if you have any questions, comments, concern, please reach out to me. I'm just always really happy to be here, happy to share, and um, yeah, happy to just know different. Thank you so much. See you next time.